Ok, Cardiovascular Anatomic Review. This is the class number one of the introduction of cardiovascular. Today we are going to make something new. We are going to record the class. In other words, if you cannot come in class, I wait not. You can go and see the class in YouTube, in my page of YouTube. Okay, cardiovascular review is a review. It's something that you know because in the other class, in the other course, we're talking about all the anatomy that we are going to review today. <coughs> but what happened to study the physiology of the blood, to study the pathology, and to study the scanning, you need to know very good the anatomy of the cardiovascular system. Remember that the cardiovascular system is a system that is very good for ultrasound. Why? Because we make echocardiography and also we are scanning arteries and veins. Arteries, example, carotid arteries, femoral arteries, and the veins of the lower limb. Cardiovascular is a system that is very good for ultrasound. More than this, all the sonographers, even general sonographer, need to know to do in cardiovascular because the hospital need people that scan in general ultrasound and also make some vascular. They use vascular technician, but vascular technician and general sonographer each day is more similar. Vascular technician doing scanning normal pregnancy by example and also general sonographer also scanning carotid other arteries and veins. The main component of the human cardiovascular system are only three. The most important, the heart, that is the pump that moves the blood. The blood that is not very important for us because the blood is chemical, it's microscopic. Remember, ultrasound is not microscopic. And the number three that is very important, blood vessels. How many blood vessels are? Only three arteries, veins, and capillaries. But capillaries are microscopic. You cannot see with ultrasound. And that is for arteries and veins are very good for ultrasound. Remember, arteries is for stenosis. And always, all the people here remember what is stenosis. It's the narrow of the artery. And veins is for clots clots in the veins, a very dangerous disease because the clot in the veins move and go to the lungs. Very dangerous disease, Embo embolis, pulmonary embolis, heart, echocardiography, blood, nothing to be with ultrasound and blood vessel. Remember that the blood is microscopic. Heart. The size of the heart, the muscular cone-shaped hollow organ about the size of clenched fist. In other words, buenas. buenas. The heart is as the hand, the closed hand. This is the fist. You can see a normal heart is little, it's not big. Normal heart is little. When the heart is big, it's because there are one disease myocardiopathy, dilated myocardiopathy. When the heart is big, it's sick, it's not normal. That pump blood through the body, you know what is this? The electrocardiogram. We're talking about the electrocardiogram. It's not very important for the sonographer to understand all the electrocardiogram, but the basic of the electrocardiogram is important. Each point, is one pulse, and this is for that. That pump blood through the body at beat normally about 70 times per minute. But not always, your rhythm of the heart change if you're moving, if you make exercise, not always is 70. This is evident, everybody know at different time, you have different heart beating. And one question, what we using to measure the heart beating in the fetus? What mode? You remember? End mode. End mode is that we use to measure the heart beating in the fetus. By coordinate nerve impulse and muscular contraction. Remember that the heart is a complex organ that the cells of the heart are at the same time nerve 
and muscle. Mm -hmm. Enclosed in the pericardium. What is the pericardium? The pericardium is a serous membrane. And when we're talking about serous membrane, we know that we are talking about two membranes. One is called parietal, the other is called visceral. The parietal is outside, the visceral is inside. And between the both membranes, there are a space called pleural space. This is the pleura or pericardial space. This is the pericardium. The membrane of sac filled with serous, serosa, serous fluid that enclose the heart and the root of the aorta and other large blood vessels. Remember, aorta is very important in ultrasound. By the aneurysm of the aorta, aorta is one organ that we are scanning a lot because there are a very common disease that is the aneurysm of the aorta. You can see here, pericardium, cover the hair, is a serosa. Epithelium, the pericardium is composed of two layers separated by a space called pericardial cavity. What is in the pericardial cavity? Nothing, a little quantity of fluid to the hair can move in one with the other membrane. But when there are fluid inside the pericardium, this is a disease. It's called pericarditis. Pericarditis is a disease when the pericardial space is filled with fluid. Remember, pleural effusion when it's the pleura and ascites, the most important, when the fluid is in the peritoneal cavity. The outer layer is termed the parietal pericardium and the inner layer is called the visceral pericardium. This is the review. I know you know that a serosa membrane has two layers, parietal and visceral. And I'm going to ask him something. Who remembers what is the name of the visceral pericardium, the other name that has the visceral pericardium? No, endocardium is the inner part of the heart. Yeah. Epicardium. Epicardium. Epicardium is the other name of the visceral pericardium. Okay, you can see this easy schematic visceral pericardium parietal pericardium and in the center the cavity called pericardial cavity. There are something in the pericardial cavity? No, there are nothing. Normally must be empty, a little quantity of fluid, but very, very little. Okay. The parietal pericardium for a strong protective sac for the head and serve also to anchor it within the mediastinum. The inferior part of the pericardium is stick with the diaphragm and this is something that put the head in one position but in general the head is very free can move in different position because it's beating you can see here a picture of the pericardium and the pleuras and this is the pericardium you can see here the pericardium around the head the visceral pericardium is also known as epicardium. Epicardium is the name of the visceral pericardium. This is other name of the same serous membrane. Visceral pericardium, parietal pericardium, and the pericardial cavity. That is the part that is empty. The parietal and visceral pericardium are continuous. It's the same membrane, the same serosa, and this is explanation, of course. This is not true. How is the pericardial cavity? If you, you remember that I put the example with a globe, I put my finger in the globe and everything. This is the same idea. 
It's like something that you put inside, but really it's not inside, it's outside. You can see here, visceral pericardium, parietal pericardium, and the pericardial cavity. Remember, this is not only for the heart, it's also for the lungs, and it's also for the abdominal organs. And in the abdominal organs are in the peritoneal cavity. This is the epicardial cavity, the pericardial cavity. Heart is located in the mediastinum. Mediastinum is a cavity inside other cavity. Inside the thorax is the mediastinum, in the center. You, you can remember that the mediastinum have different organs, but the organ most important that is in the mediastinum is the heart. But there are also aorta, IBC, a little gland that disappear when we are adult, that is called the thymus. This is other organ that there are in the mediastinum, but the most important organ in the mediastinum is the heart that is in the middle mediastinum. You can see here other picture of the mediastinum, lungs, by the side, diaphragm, inferior, superior, the big vessel, aorta, and, and, and superior vena cava, and posterior, the vertebral column between the lungs, behind and slightly left of your breast tongue, sternum, and this is the problem of echocardiography. You must scan in between the ribs because you cannot scan in through the sternum. Remember that the ultrasound cannot go through the bones. Above the diaphragm muscle, below the great vessel that are in the superior mediastinum, Great vessels, the most important of the great vessels are the aorta. Anterior to descending aorta, bronchi and esophagus. The heart is supposed to be here. Remember, one, two, three. Brachiocephalic trunk. What is the other name of the brachiocephalic trunk? Someone remember? The other name, what? Innominate artery, exactly. Innominate artery is the other name of brachiocephalic trunk. You know and you remember the brachiocephalic trunk have a bifurcation, right subclavian, right comium carotid. But the left subclavian and the left comium carotid bore directly from the aorta. It's different. Right subclavian, brachiocephalic trunk. Left subclavian, Aorta. The organ is about 12 centimeters long, 8 centimeters wide, and its product part is 6 centimeters thick. Remember, the heart normally is not a big organ. It's not like the liver, even it's not like the stomach. It's little like a hand. The heart weighs between 7 and 15 ounces that is equivalent to 200, 425 grams. Remember that I need you know the metrical system. Okay, this is the layers of the heart and this is the endocardium. In the middle, the myocardium, that is the muscle that contracts, and in the exterior, the epicardium. This is the three layer of the heart. Endocardium, myocardium, that is the most important because it's the muscle, and the pericardium, that is all the three have disease. You remember, endocarditis is one disease. I'm talking about this, the infection that takes sometimes of the people that use drugs take endocarditis, myocardium, infarction, infarction of the myocardium, and pericardium, pericarditis. Each organ has different disease. Epicardium describes the outer layer of the heart tissue. This is the epicardium. Myocardium, involuntary. What is involuntary? Because you cannot change the movement voluntary. Involuntary striated muscle found in the wolf and histologic foundation of the heart. Remember that the cells of the heart are very particular. 
because our muscles, but also our nerve. They transmit the impulse, but also contract. This is the condition more important of the hair. The cells are two functions, act like a nerve and act also like a muscle. The endocardium is the innermost layer of the tissue that lines the chamber of the hair. This endocardium is continuous with other tissue that is called endothelium. We are going to talking about the endothelium because endothelium is the epithelium that cover arteries and vein by inside. It's a very flat tissue to do not produce clotting. Its cells are similar to the endothelial cells that line the blood vessel. Endothelium and endocardium are the same tissue, only endocardium is inside the hair and endothelium is in the inner part of arteries and veins. But it's exactly very flat to do not produce trauma or problem with the red cells. The chambers include two ventricles with thick muscular wall and two atrium with thin muscular wall. The contraction, the important contraction is the ventricles. Atriums are not as important. People can be alive and atriums are not working at all. People can live normally. Not really, really normally, but normally life without the function of the atrium. But without the function of the ventricles, not. If the ventricle is not working, the person is going to die immediately. If the atrium is not working, the heart can pump blood. The important are the atrium. Right atrium, oxygenated or deoxygenated blood in the right atrium. Deoxygenated. deoxygenated. Where coming the blood from the right atrium? Inferior, inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. The other cavity is the right ventricle. The right ventricle also have deoxygenated blood. The, this blood go to the pulmonary artery, go to the lungs, take oxygen, coming back from the pulmonary veins, pulmonary veins, oxygenated or deoxygenated. Oxygenated because coming from the lungs, entering the left atrium, go through the mitral valve, entering in the left ventricle and take the aorta. Aorta is this, that has one, two, three, brachiocephalic throne, left commune carotid and left subclavian artery. Remember the right subclavian artery and the right commune carotid are the bifurcation of the innominate artery, in other words, brachiocephalic trunk. The chamber includes two ventricles with sig muscular, this is important, ventricle sig muscular, atrium thin muscular, and really the atrium are very, very thin, not important, not as important as ventricle, and this is the reason when we're talking about systole and diastole, we are talking about systole and diastole of the ventricles. We are not talking about systole or, or diastole of the atrium, not important. Systole means contraction of the ventricles. And diastole, the relaxation of the ventricles to refill the blood in the heart. I know this class is a review, but it's very good. We are going to know how much you remember. If you don't remember something, please review because this was in the class of the other course. A septum, separate the ventricle and extend between the atria, divide the head into the right and left side. Right and left side. This is very important, the septum. This is the most common congenital heart disease. Communication interventricular. This is the most common. Some people have and don't know. Some people is asymptomatic. What means asymptomatic? That the person don't feel nothing. The person has a normal life even when have the disease. A lot of people have born with a congenital disease, a communication interventricular and live normal life. And after they make ultrasound and discover sometimes 
the halls closed and nobody know why. Septum interventricular. You can look here, the volumes of the right ventricle and the left ventricle are the same, but the thick of the wall is different. Left ventricle, thick. Right ventricle, thin. This is because the pressure in the right ventricle are not as high as the pressure in the left ventricle. Remember that the pressure in the left ventricle is 120 AD, the normal pressure. This not. This have low pressures in the right ventricle. The right side receives deoxygenated blood from the vena cava and pump it into the pulmonary arteries. Of course, the function of the pulmonary arteries is put the blood in the lungs to take oxygen. Deoxygenated, and I always say this, say the matching word, right? Deoxygenated, left oxygenated blood. The left side of the heart pump oxygenated blood into the aorta and all the part of the body. This is a long axis. This is the left atrium. This is the mitral valve, and this is the left ventricle. This is a long axis view of the heart. Echocardiography. Left atrium, mitral valve, and left ventricle. This is the septum, and this is the wall of the left ventricle. Remember, this is a picture between the ribs. This is for that we need a special transducer. Someone remember the name of the special transducer to make echo? The face transducer, because it's very little and you can put between the ribs. For echo, you need a facet transducer. The valve of the hair includes the tricuspid valve. It's a valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle. The bicuspid valve that have other name, mitral valve. The name of the mitral valve is because the hat that had the pope, this little hat is called mitra mitral valve, the semilunar aortic valve that is in the aorta, of course, and the semilunar pulmonary valve are four. And remember, they work in synchronical. Is one is open, the other is closed. Is one atrioventricular is open, the other atrioventricular valve is open too. Is one atrioventricular is open, the semilunar valve is closed. This is very important to remember how working the valves. There are four valves to remember. Bicuspid. Bicuspid in the right ventricle. Mitral between the left ventricle and left atrium. Aortic valve in the aortic artery and pulmonary valve in the pulmonary artery. Atrioventricular are two. This is the tricuspid, that is in the right side, and the mitral valve, that is in the left side. This is the most important valve, the mitral valve. Mitral valve is in the left side, and remember, always the left side is more important than the right side. That not mean that there are no diseases in the right side. The most common and important diseases are in the left side. It's not as common to have problem in the right side. Atroventricular valve, two valves, one located at the opening of the aorta and the other of the opening is the pulmonary artery, each consisting of three crescent-shaped cups. This is called semilunar valves. The pulmonary valve have very little pathology. It's not easy to see with ultrasound but the aortic valve is very, very important because stenosis of the aortic valve is a very dangerous disease because when the heart cannot pump the blood through the aortic, the heart hypertrophy. You remember what is hypertrophy? The heart becomes very, very heavy and lost efficiency. The beginning of the disease of the heart is hypertrophy. The final is dilatation. 
Remember, if there are stenosis, everybody know what is stenosis. The narrow of the artery. The head cannot pump the blood and begin hypertrophy. Very problematic. It's very important. This is stenosis of the aorta. There are other diseases in the valves. The other diseases in the valves are called insufficiency or regurgitation. That means when the valve let the blood go in the wrong direction. Remember, the function of the valve is let the blood go in one direction, but don't let the blood go in the other direction. In other words, the two diseases of a valve is stenosis or regurgitation, but some people have both stenosis and regurgitation in the same valve. It's very common have the two diseases. Echocardiography is very good to diagnostic of regurgitation because you put color Doppler and you can see the direction of the blood that is the contrary and normal. Echocardiography is very good for valves. The best of echocardiography is the valves. How is the function of the valve? For, because for the electrical function of the head, we use electrocardiography. But this is better to see how the blood is moving. Systole, very important, everybody know what is this? Contraction, systole is contraction of the ventricles. The two ventricles contract at the same time. Systole is a third describing the contraction of the heart. And diastole is the contrary. Diastole is the relaxation of the ventricles to be refilled with new blood. Diastole is relaxation. And something that is very important for me to remember is in diastole, mitral valve is open. If in diastole, mitral valve is open, tricuspid valve also is open. But if the mitral valve is open, pulmonary valve is closed. If pulmonary valve is closed, also, aortic valve is closed. I, I put the contrary. Aortic valve, pulmonary valve. That working exactly is the aortic is closed, the pulmonary also is closed, and the mitral is open, the tricuspid valve is open. Mitral valve open in diastole. Aortic valve open in systole, when the blood is going outside. You remember this, it's very important, all the part of the head. This is something that I remember, that you have here the sectum, the right ventricle, the aorta. It's very important for a sonographer to know and understand all this part. This is basic. This is basic. If you don't remember everything, please retake in your home and remember all the areas, all the structure, very important organs there. Aortic valve, the cuspid mitral, you can see the septum here, endocardium, myocardium, and epicardium, everything that we study when we have the class of the head. Okay, the electric system. Signals arising in the sinoatrial, sinoatrial node is in the right atrium. This is where beginning the impulse. Sim stimulate the atria to contract and travel to the AV, atrioventricular mode. No, the atrioventricular node is low the stimulus and send to the ventricles. In other words, electricity begins here and enter by the atrioventricular to the ventricles and remember, the stimulus is not the same of contraction. A stimulus is before the contraction. After delay, here in the atroventricular node, the stimulus is conducted through the bundle is the porhine. This is a fast nerves, muscle and nerves, that deliver the stimulus to all the head and all the head contract at the same time. It's very important because if the head do not contract at the same time, loss efficiency. And it's very important the head, all the head at the same time contract. This is because have the system, the system of delivery, the impulse 
to this. If you want to see the impulse, you are not going to use echocardiographies. You want to see the impulse, you use electrography. You know the electro PQRS. Okay, you have here the most important area, sinoatrial node, where begin the impulse, atroventricular node that let the impulse enter in the ventricles, and the poor hints that deliver the impulse of all the heart. You can see here how the working, atroventricular, atroventricular is here, sinoatrial, atroventricular, and all the head. And you can see here, P, QRS, and the letter T. P is the contraction of the atrium. QRS is the stimulus, not the contraction, the stimulus of the ventricles, and the letter T means repolarization. Repolarization is when the heart is ready to begin a new impulse. P, QRS, and the T. P, atrium excitation. QRS, ventricle excitation, and the letter T that is called repolarization. Electro is a very good for medical doctor. You can get a lot of information, not only about the hertz, you can get with the electrocardiography a lot of information. But for us, it's enough to remember P, Q, R, S, and T. Blood. I'm talking about the blood. Blood is not very important to use in ultrasound. Blood is microscopic. You are not going to work in ultrasound with the red cell, with the white cell, but even it's very important information. Because remember, I always tell you that the sonographer is not only the person that takes picture. If you have a patient and the patient have low white cone, in other words, have very little white cells, you rule out infection. You know a lot of laboratory examination can give the sonographer what disease you can find and what disease you cannot find. If you are looking for infection, but the red, the white cells are normally, it's very hard, there are infections. There are a lot of elements in the laboratory that if you know, you are going to scan easy because you know what you can find and you cannot find. Blood is a specialized bodily fluid that delivers nutrients and oxygen to the cell and transport metabolic waste product away. Logical. They put oxygen and they put the CO2 outside. And the function of put the nutrients and put away the waste. It's composed of blood cells suspended in a liquid colored blood plasma. But the plus, blood plasma have proteins and have also different minerals like sodium, potassium, a lot of zinc. This is white this is red cells and this is a white cells. Even the color is not demonstrative. This is typical red cells and this is a neutrophil. This is limited important for us, but we need to know the general knowledge about the plasma constitutes 55% of the blood fluid. It's 90%, 92% water and contain proteins, glucose, that is sugar, mineral ions like sodium, potassium, hormones, you know what is hormones, the product that produce the endocrine system, carbon dioxide, this is CO2, platelets, platelets that is a very little cell that help the clotting and the blood cells that are the red cells. This is the hematocritus and this is the quantity of red cells, the percentage of red cells. This is very good also to know if you have a person with anemia, very little quantity of the red cell, you can see a murmur in the heart because the blood is moving faster and when the blood is moving faster with the stethoscope you can hear a murmur. Murmur is that in Spanish say soplo. It's something that you can hear in the heart. 
serum albumina is a very important protein that is inside the blood. This protein gives the osmotic concentration. This is very important because the albumina put the water inside the blood vessel. Remember, the, brother, the water go outside in the capillaries, put the fluid around the cells and coming inside because we have albumin. When there are no albumin, the person has edema. Edema is the water go outside, but a big, big edema. All the body get edema. Albumin is important for life. You cannot be alive if you have no albumin in your blood. It produces the osmotic concentration to produce the osmotic pressure. Clotting factor, an important clotting factor for us. Yes, because we are scanning clotting in the legs. Clotting factor are proteins that produce clotting. Clotting is good but also clotting is bad because when one clot is producing in a big, big vein, you have the danger that the clot can move into the lung and produce pulmonary embolies. One disease that is very important for sonographer because we are scanning the people and remember, if you find a clot in the veins of the leg, the patient cannot go home. The patient must remain in the hospital because can have a embol embolis, pulmonary embolis. Clotting factor, it's very complex. The clotting factor is something that doctors need to know and understand very good, but not for us. When you're doing thoracentesis, you remember what is thoracentesis, that you help the doctor to put away fluid between the lungs, and you need to measure. If the clotting factor are not normally you call the doctor and you say, no doctor, we cannot make the thoracentesis. The patient have low clotting times. The clotting is not working good. This is something that is normal in sonographer. Maybe it's not about sonography, but in the hospital, the doctor need you understand that the clotting factor are not normal and you cannot perform a thoracentesis or a paracentesis that is to take the blood from the peritoneal cavity. Vessel, okay, this is important. Clotting factor and everything is something that you are going to get in the hospital and it's important you understand. But we are going to vessels. We finish with the part of the head. We talking a little about the things that are in the blood and we are going to talking about the blood vessels. The blood vessels are the part of the circulation system that transport blood through the body. There are two principal, arteries and veins, but there are other very important that is called capillaries. But capillaries, you cannot see capillaries with ultrasound. Remember, ultrasound is not microscopic. Capillaries are very little, you cannot see. In other words, the disease of the capillaries is not for ultrasound. We are going to talking about the problem in the arteries, and the problem in the veins. This is very important. There are three major types of blood vessels. Arteries, veins, and the capillaries. But for ultrasound, arteries and veins, not capillaries. You cannot see with ultrasound capillaries. Capillaries are different because capillaries have no the three layers. Capillaries have only one layer. Okay, the arteries which carry the blood away from the heart. Remember this, an artery is not an artery because half oxygenated blood. An artery is an artery because the direction of the blood. Remember the pulmonary artery have deoxygenated blood. And the pulmonary veins have oxygenated blood. Oxygen in the blood is not determinant if a artery or is a vein. What say is a artery is the blood go from the head away. And the characteristic of a vein that put the blood inside the head. The direction of the blood is the important one to know what is an artery and what is a vein. The artery wall consists of three layers. Also, in the artery and the vein, we have three layers. The tunica intima, 
This is called endothelium. And we're talking about endocardium. Endocardium is exactly like the tunica intima. Endothelium is an epithelium, very, very flat, very, very soft. The second part is the tunica media. Remember the M because it's muscular, matching word. Media, muscular. Remember the M. Tunica media is the muscular because the arteries can put more pressure or less pressure. This is a muscular tissue. What is the function of the muscular tissue? Contraction, in other words. The blood pressure is determined by the tunica media. Very important to hypertension. You give drugs to the patient to delay the arteries. High blood pressure, very important disease that kill a lot of people. And the last one, the tunica adventitia. This is the exterior, the outer tunica adventitia. In other words, have three layers, but the important difference between the artery and the vein is the artery have a big muscular and the vein have a little muscular layer. And this is the reason when you are scanning the aorta, you find a echogenic walls. But when you are scanning the IVC, you don't find the wall because the wall is very thin. Arteries have very muscular wall, tunica media, veins not. In the veins, the muscular wall is very, very little. This is the principal difference between arteries and veins. The muscular is big in the arteries and is little in the veins. But in other words, have the same tree. Tunica adventitia, the strong outer covering of arteries and veins. Tunica adventitia. Tunica media, it is composed of a small muscle and elastic fiber. This layer is thicker in arteries than in vein. This is the most important thing. This is that I am going to put question about what is the difference between arteries and veins. The difference is the tunica media. Is big in arteries, is little in veins. And the last one, the tunica intima, the inner layer of arteries and veins. This is the tunica intima, is also called endothelium, endothelium. And when it's inside the heart, it's called endocardium, but it's the same. The capillaries which enable the actual exchange of water and chemical between the blood and the tissue. What happened with capillaries? Had no muscular, had no adventitia. Capillaries only have endothelium. Capillaries have very thin wall comprised only of endothelial cells, which allow substance to move through the wall in other world. Capillaries are very different. We cannot see capillaries, only one layer, endothelium. There are different capillaries in different places, but it's not important for us. We are going to scan something big. Remember ultrasound is not microscopic. Ultrasound is for things that you can see. The veins which carry blood from the capillaries back toward the heart. In other words, the direction of the blood in the veins is to the heart. The direction of the blood of the arteries away the heart. Veins. And always put veins in color blue because in general the oxygenated blood has a more blue color than the oxygenated blood. The structure of the vein is similar to that of arteries, again consisting of three layers. Three layers for the artery, three layers for the vein. What is the difference? The muscular, the media, because the muscular is big in the arteries, but is little in the veins. Tunica adventitia, this fever allows the arteries and veins to stretch to prevent overextension. Tunica media, this layer is thinner. Please, this is important here, the tunica media is thinner than the tunica media of the artery. This is the principal difference between 
arteries and veins, tunica media on the word end, muscular media and muscular are the same. And the tunica intima that is exactly is the same tissue, the inner layer of arteries and veins. No difference between the tunica intima of the vein, of the arteries, and even what is the name of the tunica intima in the heart? Endocardium. Endocardium is the same as endothelium. No difference. Difference between arteries and veins. Arteries are more muscular than veins. Veins are often closer to the skin. And veins contain valves to help keep blood flowing toward the head. The veins have a little valve. But in ultrasound, how you recognize something is a vein of if an artery? In ultrasound, exactly. You put pressure, the vein close, the artery remains open. This is the principal difference between artery and vein. If you are scanning and you find two anechoic round structures that you suppose are vessel and you want to know what is the artery of the vein, you put pressure, the vein close, and the artery remain open. Other form to know, you put color Doppler and you feel the color change in the artery and remain the same color in the vein. Remember, blue or red color don't mean nothing because blue and red is only the direction of the blood. This is the difference between arteries and veins. Anatomy. Okay. Pulmonary circulation is the portion of the cardiovascular system which carry oxygen deplay. In other words, deoxygenated blood away from the head and return oxygenated blood. What happens with the pulmonary circulation is very hard. Even ultrasound is not good. You can see the pulmonary artery. Only one picture in the echocardiography is for pulmonary artery. But in, go inside the lungs and measure the blood velocity is very, very hard. There are not invented a system to study the pulmonary circulation. There are diseases of the pulmonary circulation. There are diseases, but ultrasound is not good for scanning the blood in the lungs. Systemic circulation. This is the circulation that is important for us. The big circulation. Where beginning the systemic circulation? In the aorta. The aorta is the beginning of the systemic circulation. What is the final part of the systemic circulation? Inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. This is the final part of the systemic circulation. Systemic circulation is the part of the cardiovascular system which carries oxygenated blood away from the head and return deoxygenated blood. In other words, put the blood of the aorta and return the blood in the IVC and the superior vena cava. Right and left coronary artery. This is the first branch of the aorta. In other words, the first branch of the systemic circulation are two very little and very important arteries, the coronary arteries. When the coronary artery have plaques, the person have infarction. Ultrasound is not very good, it's very little. You can see, sometimes in echocardiography, you can see when you see the aorta, a little part of the coronary artery, but it's not enough good to make diagnosis. To make this, they make catheteries. They put a catheter and a study with X-ray who hope is good the function of the coronary artery. But even if it's not good for ultrasound, all the people must remember that the first arteries, the first branch of the aorta are the coronary the left coronary for the left ventricle and the right coronary for the right ventricle. Brachiocephalic trunk or innominate artery. I don't use too much the term innominate artery, but there are a lot of books that are talking about innominate artery. And in the examination, they're asking you what is the innominate artery. I prefer to use the term 
brachiocephalic trunk because brachio arm and cephalic mean more is the artery that give blood to the arm and to the head a large artery arising from the arc of the aorta and divide into the right subclavian artery and the right commun carotid artery please this is not nothing new i repeat this every day the right bra the brachiocephalic trunk not the right brachiocephalic trunk because there are only one brachiocephalic trunk the bifurcate in the right subclavian and the right common carotid artery the common carotid artery is an artery that supplies the head and neck with oxygenated blood very important for us the carotid this is a protocol that you need to do in any hospital clinic is very popular everybody wants you scanning carotid with the machine that we have here we can scan in perfect carotid and carotid have other things that is very good <coughs> you can practice yourself and this is very good because that depends on nothing if you are in the lab take and practice i learn how to scan carotid with my neck this is very good remember this is the commune carotid artery the internal carotid artery had two major arteries, one in each side of the neck. This is the bifurcation, orientation in sagittal, anterior, posterior, superior, and inferior. This is the commune carotid, and this is the bifurcation. In general, the big one is called internal carotid artery. Go to the brain. And the little one is called external carotid artery go to the face to the bones to the muscle and are very different because the brain need a lot of blood and it's called low resistance it's a artery with a shape in the curve low resistance of the contrary external carotid have other shape it's called high resistance artery it's very important to know if one artery is high resistance or low resistance and also it's very important if you find a tumor and the way is low resistance you can suppose the tumor is malignant because use a lot of blood if you have a tumor with high resistance you can suppose the tumor is benign remember that are different the curves of the high resistance and low resistance this is the internal carotid artery this is the most important place of plague formation plague formation is stenosis in other words the stenosis of the carotid happen here near the bifurcation because the bifurcation produce turbulence the turbulence produce trauma the trauma produce plaque the plaque produce more turbulence, more turbulence produce more plaque. This is a vicious circle. Always here, the most common stenosis are near in the internal carotid artery, near the bifurcation. This is the area that you need to study with more emphasis, the bifurcation. They arise from the common carotid artery where this bifurcation in the internal and external carotid artery and they supply the brain but carotid artery is not the only artery that supply the brain there are two arteries that enter by a hole in the occipital bone what is the name of the hole in the occipital bone foramen foramen magnus what other important structure go through the the spinal cord exactly the internal carotid go to the brain. What are the other arteries that go to the brain? The vertebral arteries. Four arteries go to the brain and enter in the polygon of Willis. The polygon of Willis deliver the blood in different directions. Okay, the external carotid artery begin at the same place, at the level of the upper part of the thyroid cartilage. Here. This is the bifurcation, not always it's exactly. There are different. Where common carotid artery bifurcate. 
In general, the big one is the internal carotid artery. The little one is the external carotid artery. In general, the external is more superficial and the internal is more deeper, but that not always happen. This is different person have different carotid arteries. The subclavian arteries are two major arteries of the human thorax below the clavicle. Subclavian below the clavicle. You must know how to scan it. You are scanning from here for the supraclavicular fossa or the infraclavicular fossa. This is a artery that they asking in the protocol. It's not very important in pathology. Remember that the vascular studies of the upper limb are not as common as vascular studies of the lower limb. But even, even one time a month or something like that, they ask him to make arterial or venous of the upper limb, but not lower limb is something that you are going to scan every day. Subcla subclavian is below the clavicle. You can see here the subclavian. They receive blood from the arc of the aorta, the left subclavian. They receive blood from the arc of the aorta, the left subclavian, because the right subclavian takes the blood from the innominate artery. The subclavian artery supplies blood to the arm, with some branch supplying the head and the thorax. The vertebral arteries are branch. The vertebral arteries are branch of the subclavian. Remember this. And there are only little branch to the shoulder. The mammary, very important, the mammary arteries that give blood to the breast is also a branch of the subclavian. I recommend this, make a picture, and when you make a picture, you are going to remember better the arteries and the veins, because the veins are the same name of the arteries. If there are the subclavian artery, there are the subclavian vein. If there are the femoral artery, there are the femoral vein. But remember, there are some veins that are called superficial veins. Superficial veins have no artery. In the upper limb, basilica and cephalica. And the lower limb, the saphenus, the great, great saphenus and the lesser saphenus. But if it's artery, have a vein. All the artery have a vein with the same name. Vertebral arteries. The vertebral arteries are major arteries of the neck. What is the characteristic very important that help in ultrasound to localize the vertebral arteries here. When you put the transducer, the bone produces a shadow, and that lets you know that you are scanning the vertebral arteries. When you are scanning carotid, you can recognize very easily the vertebral arteries because they go through a little holes. What is the name of these holes? Transfer foramen. Transfer foramen. The transfer foramen, the vertebral arteries, enter through the foramen magnus and go in the head to finish in the Willis polygon vertebral artery. They branch from the subclavian arteries and merge to four single midline basilar artery. Enter to the foramen magnum and after enter the foramen magnum for the basilar artery. The basilar artery finish in the Willis polygon. Basilar artery supply blood to the posterior part of the circle of Willis. No polygon, some people call polygon, other people call circle of Willis, and do significant portion of the brain. The, the blood for the posterior part of the brain enter by the vertebral artery. You can see here, posterior cerebral, posterior communicating artery, anterior cerebral and anterior communicating artery. This is to deliver the blood to the head. It's anastomosis. Everybody remember what is anastomosis? The union of one artery with other artery. Anastomosis. This is an anastomotic circle. Anastomosis because artery become together with artery. The circle of Willis. Circulus arterius cerebri is anastomotic system of artery 
that sit at the base of the brain. This is very important. If you close one carotid, the blood go to the other place. Polygonal of Willis. The circle of Willis is formed when the internal carotid artery enter in the cranial cavity bilaterally and divide into the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. The middle cerebral artery is not part of the polygon of Willis. But I am not going to more, more emphasis in the polygon of Willis. The anterior cerebral artery are then united by the anterior communicating artery. This is the only artery in the circle of Willis that is only one. The only artery that is only one is the anterior communicating because all the other are two, cerebral anterior, posterior communicating, and posterior cerebral artery. Remember our seven. Seven arteries form the circle of Willis. The anterior cerebral arteries are then united by the anterior communicating artery. This is the anterior communicating artery. You need the internal carotid system. The posterior communicating artery are this one here. Complete the circle of Willis by joining the internal carotid system anterior via the posterior communicating arteries. Aquí están the posterior communicating arteries. This is the posterior cerebral arteries. This is the basilar. This is the vertebral. And this is the foramen magnus. <coughs> The right subclavian artery originates from the brachiocephalic trunk. But the left subclavian artery, not. Why? Because the left subclavian artery begins directly in the aorta. Very important, this is not the first time. Innominate artery. The left subclavian artery comes from the aortic artery. The function is the same, one from the right, other for the left. But the right begins the bifurcation of the brachiocephalic artery. The axillary artery begins at the first rib as direct continuation of the subclavian artery. In other words, the subclavian artery changes the name and become calling the axillary artery. Very easy to scan. Very easy only, put the axilla, put the transducer, and you can find the axillary artery. It's a big artery, and have the artery and the vein, one with the other together. Artery and vein are together in the axilla. And become the brachial artery. After finish the axilla, when go through the border of the amosel called teres major, that is something that you cannot see in ultrasound because it's something that is, you cannot see really the moment when begin brachial artery, but you know how to scan the brachial artery. I explained you, you see, you can see the difference, this is the bicep, this is the tricep between the both artists. You can see the mark here, here you put the transducer and you scan the brachial artery. You can see here, it is parallel by the axillary vein. You can see here, axillary artery and axillary vein. And you can know that the axillary vein is more oval mm. and the axillary artery is more round. If you put pressure, what happened? The vein close and the artery remain open. You can scan yourself, this is very problematic. Take your transducer and scan it yourself and you can find very easy the axillary artery and the axillary vein. Brachial artery originate at the lateral border of the teres major muscle. This is beginning the brachial. It's a continuation of the axillary artery. Curves down anterior to the humerus, posterior to the visital aponeurosis. What is the aponeurosis? The tissue that covers the muscle. This is the artery here. And you can find here in this area. This is not as important as femoral because arterial of the upper limb is very, very rare protocol, very little. I, working 10 years in hospital, I scanning four or five times arterial. It's something that doctors don't need because if there are problems in the arteries, you can suppose how 
bad are the arteries of the legs. And these very old people, in general, they ask in very little for arterial. They ask in venous of the upper limb, sometimes because they need veins to put needles. But in general, it's more important, lower limb is more important in vascular than <coughs> upper limb. Brachial artery has three main branches, of which profunda brachii is the most important. You, in general, they don't ask in you to scan the profunda brachii. You only take one picture of the brachial and brachial artery branch into radial and ulnar artery. Very easy, have the same name of the bones. If you know the bones, you know the name of the artery. The brachial artery bifurcate where here in the anterior part of the elbow. One is the radial, the typical artery that the doctor takes to make the pulse, and the other is the ulnar artery. Antecubital fossa. This is the antecubital fossa here. Radial artery is the main blood vessel with oxygenated blood, of course, of the lateral aspect of the forearm. Radial, lateral, ulnar, medial. Everybody remember lateral and medial, this is important. Radial is the lateral, ulnar is the medial. Radial artery becomes the deep palmar arm. It's not very important. In the vascular examination, you can be sure they are going to ask in this. The radial artery is the deep palmar arm, and the ulnar is the superficial which join with the deep branch of the ulnar artery. It's anastomosis. The ulnar artery is the main blood vessel with oxygenated blood of the medial aspect of the arm, or the forearm. This is radial, this is ulnar. Terminating the superficial palmar arc. You can see the ulnar in the superficial, the radial in the deep. This is sure question. In the examination, they always asking you about what is the deep, what is medical is not important. In the hospital, nobody is going to ask you this. But in the examination of vascular anatomy, is very important. Like 50% of the examination of vascular is anatomy. A lot of anatomy in vascular. Very good, my friend, the teacher Daniel, passed vascular today. Oh, and he is very happy. He's very happy, we are happy too, because it's more knowledge, more certification for the school. Terminate the superficial palmar arm, which join with the superficial branch of the radial artery. The superficial palmar arm is formed predominantly by the ulnar artery. Not important in clinical, very common questions in the test. The deep palmar arm is an arterial network formed in the palm. It is usually formed mainly from the terminal part of the radial artery. ¿Cómo estamos de tiempo? Oh my God. This, this clock is good? Okay. Very good. Palmar digital artery arise from the convexity of the palmar arc and process distally. Not very important for us. In this moment, this is called the digital arteries. Okay, go to the abdominal aorta. Abdominal aorta is very important for sonographer. Sonographer must know perfectly the abdominal aorta. I'm talking a lot about abdominal aorta. It begins at the level of the diaphragm. When the aorta cross through the diaphragm, begin abdominal aorta. Travel down the posterior wall of the abdomen in front of the vertebral column. This is very important. If you find the vertebral column, you can see the aorta. Our landmarks are together. Always aorta and vertebral column are together. Aorta anterior, vertebral column posterior. How you see the vertebral column? Like a big shadow because it's bone and very, very posterior. You can see here the different area. Please, this is very important to remember. Celiac throne that have two principal branch that you can see in ultrasound and they call it the beard, the C beard. 
This is one branch is the hepatic artery, the other branch is the splenic artery. And sometimes have other branch that is called the left gastric. But for this important, hepatic and splenic artery. After this, you have other important landmark, superior mesenteric ah. artery. And it's very easy to see in ultrasound because it's very echogenic. Have fat that produce very echogenic. You have other important arteries, renal arteries. And remember that the left renal, that, that the right renal artery is the only artery that curves posterior to the aorta and the left renal vein is the only vein that curves anterior to the aorta remember this this is this is true in, in examination they are going to ask in this okay right renal left renal there are a little branch here called supra renals not important for me you have here the gonadals the gonads are the artery for the gonads. What are the name of the gonads in male? Testi testicles. testicles. And what are the name of the gonads in females? Oh. Ovaries are the same organ that develop in difference between female and male. And that coming the inferior mesenteric artery. Not easy to see, but remember they have anastomosis with superior mesenteric artery. Superior mesenteric give blood to the bowel and also inferior, but inferior give more blood to the colon, to the final part. And you have here very important bifurcation of the aorta. What are the name of the branch of the bifurcation? Iliac, iliac common iliac arteries. The common iliac arteries bifurcate in external and internal iliac artery. It's not very hard. It's not very hard. It's only to take and remember. It's not very hard. Remember, celiac throne, hepatic and splenic, superior mesenteric artery, right renal, left renal, gonadal, that you cannot see with ultrasound, and the inferior mesenteric artery that not, is not easy to see with ultrasound. Bifurcation, right common iliac, left common iliac and the bifurcation of the common iliac external iliac and internal iliac external iliac for the leg internal iliac for the organs in the pelvis urinary bladder uterus the organs that are in the pelvis abdominal aorta is very important not only for the examination is one person is working ultrasound and don't know the abdominal aorta is not a good sonographer. It's impossible to work in because you have pathology here that is called aneurysm, and the doctor asking you, superior or inferior to the renal arteries? Because inferior to the renal arteries is easy. Superior to the renal arteries is very hard, very difficult. Visceral arteries, celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery, Middle suprarenal, not important. Renal, very important. Gonadal, not very important. And the inferior mesenteric that you cannot see. General, but this is very important. This and this. One, two, three. You can see here the picture. This is the left gastric that I'm talking to you. Hepatic, splenic, superior mesenteric artery, right renal, Left renal, remember that the right renal artery is the only artery in the body that curves posterior to the IVC. The left renal artery that is short, the left renal is shorter than the right renal, the gonadal and the inferior mesentery. And the bifurcation, common iliac and common iliac, right common iliac and left common iliac. This is very important, this place, because aneurysms in general are here in the bifurcation. You can see here a picture that I see and I know that you know. This is the aorta, celiac throne, superior mesenteric artery, tip of the liver, peritoneum with the two layers, parietal and visceral, 
muscle and subcutaneous. Tip of the liver and this little part here is the pancreas, the neck of the pancreas, between the superior mesenteric artery and the celiac trunk. And posterior to the aorta, what is this? The column, the vertebral column. You can see here, nothing important because this is a bone. You can see here, aneurysm. This is a typical pathology. This is something that you scan a lot of time. Not to make the diagnosis. To know the following. When the aneurysm is more than six centimeters, it's very dangerous. The person cannot go home immediately in the hospital to make surgery. Very bad. Six centimeters is the maximum acceptable diameter of abdominal aneurysm. You can see this abdominal aneurysm is infrarenal, is below the renal arteries, inferior to the renal arteries. This is the good one. You can see here in the picture, in the ultrasound, you can see the ultrasound of the aortic aneurysm, very common protocol. But for older people, you cannot find a young person with problem in the aortic. This is old people, but very, very common. All the week you are scanning three or four aortic aneurysms. Okay, you can see here in transverse. What I know this is in transverse? Because the anechoic area is round, is I am in sagittal, the anechoic area is elongated. Orientation in transverse. Anterior, Anterior. Anterior. Right, right. right and left. You cross your arms. Celiac trunk. The celiac artery supply oxygenated blood looking liver, stomach, abdominal esophagus, spleen and superior hull of both duodenum and the pancreas. In other words, the celiac trunk is very important. If the celiac trunk close, the person is going to die because there are a lot of organs that are take the blood from the celiac trunk. Both obstruction of the celiac trunk and obstruction of the superior mesenteric artery are very bad disease automatically is like 90% that the person is going to die when have obstruction of the celiac trunk or the superior mesenteric artery. The cows or etiology, plaques. Plaques are the cows of obstruction. I see in the hospital, very, very bad disease. Okay, this is not ultrasound, of course, because the artery is white. In ultrasound, the arteries have blood and is anechoic. This is a CT scan and you can see the splenic artery that have a lot of curves and the hepatic artery that go to the liver. <laughs> or not the principal. What is the principal vessel that give blood to the liver? It's not the hepatic artery. Poral the portal vein. The portal vein give more blood than the hepatic artery. The blood of the hepatic artery mix it with the blood of the portal vein and go through the liver. This is the hepatic artery. It's little, it's not as big as the portal vein. You can see here, this is ultrasound, and you can see here, celiac trunk, hepatic artery, and splenic artery. Oh, the picture of the same. What is this? Celiac trunk, this is? Superior mesenteric artery, aorta, vertebral column, tip of the liver, peritoneum, that is here. Okay. The common iliac arteries are two large arteries that originate from the aortic bifurcation. We're talking about this. Aortic bifurcation, we scan aortic bifurcation for aneurysm because this is the most common area of aneurysm. The aortic bifurcation is right common iliac and left common iliac. The internal iliac artery formerly known as the hypogastric. What is the name of hypogastric? Because it's the artery that give blood to the hypogastrium. What is the hypogastrium? In the inferior part of the abdomen. It's the main artery of the pelvis. A lot of branch, a lot of branch. That 
artery have a lot of little branch ovary ovarian that is other little artery uterine there are a lot of arteries that are not important to remember all the arteries of the iliac internal but they go to the pelvis is the artery that gives blood to the pelvis the internal iliac artery supply the wall and viscera of the pelvis the buttock the reproductive organ and the medial compartment of the thigh this is a big big area you can see here a lot of branch you don't need to remember all this branch but you need to remember all the branch of the aorta is different you need to remember all the branch of the aorta you don't need to remember all the branch of the internal iliac is different this is very important that you know what area you are going to go deep and what area you are only to study superficial it's not logical that you are going to study a lot of arteries that you never scan are not in the test and not important it arises at the bifurcation of the common iliac artery this is important place because there are not only here the external the internal also the ureters are here and also very common ovaries are here in other words the bifurcation is a very important landmark sometimes to find ovaries and the iliac extern that is here ureters are in the same area and more important the area of ureters are the narrow part of the ureters in other words the area where a stone stop and don't move more this is the ureters are here the external iliac artery is a large artery in the pelvic region that carry blood to the lower limb important for us important because we are scanning the femoral and sometimes the protocol of the femoral also one picture of the external iliac you moving a little superior and you can take picture of the external iliac arterial study of the lower limbs are very important are very common very common studies it's important to know what are the most important protocols because it's not the same one protocol that you're doing one time a year that the protocol that you are going to scanning every day arterial of the lower limb is a very common protocol you can see here external iliac and the internal iliac here in the bifurcation of the common iliac <coughs> the external iliac artery arise from the bifurcation of the common iliac artery common iliac artery bifurcation external and internal the femoral artery is a large artery in the muscle of the side this is the artery that is here in the leg very very big very very important you are going to scan this a lot of time very important arterial of the lower limbs <laughs> femoral what is the name of femoral because the bone is called femur femur bone femoral artery the femoral artery starts at the continuation of the external iliac artery behind the inguinal ligament the inguinal ligament is in this area that nobody when you touch their very sensible area this is where the external iliac artery change the name and, be, and begin common femoral artery <coughs> common femoral artery bifurcate in profunda femoral artery and the superficial femoral artery we talking about this name a lot of people don't call this artery superficial femoral artery only call femoral artery because if you call superficial femoral artery you call superficial femoral vein and the superficial femoral vein is not a superficial vein because remember superficial veins have no artery and it's a contradiction superficial femoral artery is not a superficial vein it's a deep vein and this is for that some person don't use here superficial only cal femoral artery but i working in hospital and always use superficial femoral artery doctor don't care about this but sometimes in congress 
in medical reunions, in books, you can find. I work in a lot of time and I use superficial femoral artery. It's not good, it's confusing, but it's common in the hospital to put the name of superficial femoral artery. Popliteal artery that is here. But in this moment is the continuation, the external common, the iliac external, begin common femoral artery. The common femoral artery bifurcate the profunda, not easy to scan. You can scan only a little place and you can scan the superficial femoral artery that is very easy. You scan it here in the leg, it's the most important. You scan it three times, the, superfic the superficial femoral artery or in other words, femoral artery. The femoral artery pulse can be palpated at the femoral triangle. This is one pulse that is here, very easy. You can feel the pulse in this area. And the femoral triangle is here. This is called the femoral triangle. The profunda femoris. Artery is a branch of the femoral artery that travels deeply. But this picture is a mistake because I put the bifurcation, but this is the bifurcation of the vein. The bifurcation of the artery is superior. The picture is in sagittal, anterior, posterior, superior, okay. and inferior. If the picture was a little superior, I can see, but this is the bifurcation of the vein. But the picture is there. Some radiologists, vascular surgeons, and other specialist physicians refer to the femoral artery as the superficial femoral artery after the profunda femoris artery branch point to differentiate the femoral artery segment before and after the branch point. But that's not good. They call only femoral arteries. This term historically has not been used by anatomists and has fallen out of favor with most physicians because it has led to considerable confusion with its accompanying vein, the femoral vein, which if called superficial femoral vein, might incorrectly be assumed to be a superficial vein as opposed to a deep vein. This is that I explained. Superficial femoral vein is not a superficial vein is a deep vein because of artery. And remember, is a vein half artery is not superficial. Only deep vein half arteries. Superficial vein have no arteries. And the superficial vein of the leg are the greater saphena and the lesser saphena. No artery called saphena. In the arm, basilica and cephalica, no artery basilic no artery cephalic. The arteries are the brachial, ulnar, and radial. That depends on where you're working. If, the, if your radiologist use superficial, use superficial. If your radiologist don't use superficial, don't use. Remember, you are going to scan exactly as the radiologist want. The femoral artery at the upper part of the side lie in front of the hip joint. What is the name of the bone, hip bone? This is the acetabulum. Remember, this is the head of the femur. And this is, in this part, you can see, this is a very important part for medical doctor. They put the catheters, the catheter to make the echo, the echo, echogram. They put here, and sometimes there are a complication, call it pseudoaneuris, in other words false aneurys. This is a big ball of blood, not clotting, that is a complication of catheteris. With ultrasound, the doctor put the ultrasound, and with an injection of a substance, they put the ultrasound and put the injection inside and close the cavity. It's a very interesting procedure of ultrasound. It's therapeutic, not diagnostic, remember. Therapeutic is when you know and you are going to repair. And diagnostic is only when you want to see. I see this is a very common complication of catheteris. You can see here. 
complex area to scanning. You must be careful if you are male more. Be careful. There are a lot of complaints. Be careful when you are scanning areas like this. This is the problem of male in ultrasound. You must be 100% professional and the most important, never looking at the age of your patient. Talking, be nice, have a good customer care, but never make fixation. Never looking in the ace. Only at the beginning and at the final. You give your hand, you say, hello, my name is Segundo, I am sonographer, but you never look the face all the time. When you finish, you're doing the same, but not in the, in the process. It's very important because the person can have a misunderstanding. Sometimes women suppose, and it's not true, the sonographer is doing something incorrect. What happened the contrary? Sometimes the patient suppose the sonographer is very nice with him and he have the chance to get something that is not <laughs> real. <laughs> Be careful. It's very important to work in very professional. Remember, this is a profession that you touch. You remain with the patient a lot of time. It's very problematic. I always say this. It's very important. Okay, this is to scan in the commun femoral artery. This is the area. Okay, this is a transducer. This is a linear switch transducer and a frequency around how many megahertz? Seven, seven point five. High frequency, low penetration, good quality. High frequency, seven megahertz, good quality, but no penetration. You cannot use the transducers if you are going to scan the kidney because the kidney are too deep. What transducer we use for the kidney? 3.5 convex switched. What transducer we use for echocardiography? Phased transducer. Okay, you can see here the color Doppler. Remember, this is a B mode, and in the color Doppler, the machine put color where the blood is moving. Color Doppler. You can see here a combination color Doppler and spectral Doppler. The shape of the wave is triphasic, positive, negative, and other time positive. This is the normal artery. When the artery is working good, it's multifacic or triphasic. This is the normal. This is a B mode, color Doppler. The gate is here, and you are measuring the velocity here. You have here time in the horizontal and velocity in the vertical. Remember, do not confuse a spectral Doppler with N mode are totally different, but the picture is similar. N mode is to measure the hair beating. A spectral Doppler is to measure the velocity of the blood. This is Doppler. In the lower part of its curve, it lies in the medial side of the body of the femur, of course, femur femoral. This is the deep femoral, this is the not good colored superficial femoral. This is the great safena vein that is superficial. Great <laughs> safena vein is superficial. The femoral artery end at the junction of the middle with the lower seat of the thigh, where it passes through an opening in the hunter's canal. Very important. All the examination is going to ask you what is the hunter canal? The hunter canal is a canal that goes from here to the posterior part of the knee. Hunter canal, and this is the problem. When you are scanning the arteries, don't begin to the knee. Finish here, because more inferior, there are no more artery. This is the hunter canal. Remember that I told you, RDMS always asking about things that have name. It have a name, they are going to ask the hunter's canal to become, in the posterior part of the knee, popliteal artery. Popliteal artery, very easy to scan. Put your transducer and you can find the popliteal artery. It's a deep, it's an artery, of course, half a vein. What is the name of the vein? Popliteal vein. Because it's a deep vein, but 
superficial vein have no arteries. The popliteal arteries supply blood to the knee, joint, and muscles. This is the function of the popliteal artery, but not only, they continue and bifurcate. It is accompanied along with the length by the popliteal vein. Popliteal artery and popliteal vein. You can see different color. Why? Because the direction of the blood is different. If one blood go in one direction, the other blood go in the contrary direction. This is for the color. Remember that the color of the blood, please remember the color of the blood is not red or blue because it's oxygenated. It's only the direction of the blood. When go in one direction, the machine put red. When go in the other direction, the machine put blue. When this artery and vein, the direction of the blood is the contrary. And this is for that you can see here in the same color doppler, one artery and one vein. You can see here, popliteal vein and popliteal artery, but in transverse. Very easy to see. This is the area to take this picture. Sometimes very, very hard patient, very, very little. You need to change the position of the patient. Put the patient in the other position. But in general, it's very rare. If you make this function, remember, try to have the leg as horizontal as you can. Don't close because the blood is not going to flow. And then this is very easy artery to see. The termination of the popliteal artery is the bifurcation in the anterior tibial and the posterior tibial. You can see popliteal artery bifurcate. Anterior tibial, what is the name of tibial? Because the bone is the tibia. Anterior tibial and the posterior tibial. And this little one that coming here is called peroneal artery. The anterior tibial artery of the lower limb carry blood to the anterior compartment of the leg and dorsal surface of the foot. Okay, this is by this side. Anterior is in this side. It cross the anterior aspect of the ankle joint at which point it becomes the dorsal pedis artery. This is the last artery of the protocol. It is the continuation of the anterior tibial artery. Some people do not scan in the anterior tibial artery only scanning the dorsal pedis. That depends on the protocol. You know, different hospitals use different protocols. I working in general without scanning the anterior tibial artery because I scan in the dorsal pedis. And this is the continuation, but that depends when you're working. Maybe some protocols use also the tibial anterior artery, like Daniel, Daniel teach with the anterior. I only teach with the dorsal pedis artery. The dorsal pedis artery is a blood vessel that carries blood to the dorsal surface of the foot. There are a pulse. You can touch the pulse. It's very easy. Uh, in general, it's a very hard artery to find. I put the finger. I try to find with the finger before scanning. I make this little trick. Even the people say, sonographer must not touch the patient. This is not true. How the sonographer touch the patient? Okay, you can see here, this is a continuous ultrasound. Mm -hmm. This little pencil is a continuous ultrasound and he's looking. The posterior tibial artery carry blood to the posterior compartment of the leg and plantar surface of the foot. This is the posterior tibial, it's very easy. You put the transducer here in the bone and begin moving posterior. Of course, this is the same explanation, it's not nothing. You need to practice. If you don't do, you don't know. I can explain, you put the transducer here, you move it, not. You need to take the person and scanning. If not, you never know what to do. This is the part of the practice. It's very important. Remember, ultrasound is a combination of theory and practice. If you have only theory, you cannot work because you don't know a scan. But if you only have practice, you are not good sonographer because you don't understand what are you looking and this is very important and this is something that I make a lot of emphasis in my philosophy of the ultrasound for me sonographer understand what they are looking I don't like sonographer that only scanning and don't know nothing this is not the good sonographer protocols are important 
but the intelligence of the sonographer are more important than protocols. This is my philosophy. Good protocol, good quality, accurate is very good. But also it's important that sonographers have theory. And this is the reason there are examination of theory. When you go examination of RDMS, nobody is going to ask you about protocols. They are going to ask you about anatomy, physiology, and pathology. The scanning has no examination. But when you are to going to get a job, they give you the transducer and say, scan, in other words. The two parts are important, theory and practice. This is the posterior tibial. I, in, in general, I don't take there. I take superior, here. I am going to teach you. But this is other to get the posterior tibial artery. If you cannot find here, you are going to look there. The peroneal artery supplies blood to the lateral compartment of the leg and is a branch of the posterior tibial artery. What happened here? Very interesting. There are different explanations. Attention. Sometimes they do the, this is the trunk, tibioperoneal trunk. They call different. This is very important because you are studying one form and the examination asking in the other. You're looking. Popliteal bifurcate in anterior tibial and posterior tibial. And posterior tibial give the peroneal. Other explanation. Popliteal artery bifurcate in anterior tibial and tibioperoneal trunk. And tibioperoneal trunk bifurcate in peroneal and tibial posterior. This is the problem in examination. You read one book and the question was in other book. B Intelligent, you don't know, study boss. Study that it tibioperoneal trunk and study also the normal one. I prefer this. Popliteal bifurcate anterior and posterior and posterior give the branch call it peroneal artery. They don't scan peroneal artery in general. Very little. You can see the picture, external iliac, comium femoral. Femoral artery, I cannot see here the deep, I suppose this is the deep. Popliteal, posterior tibial and anterior tibial. And this is the same that you remember, aorta, common iliac, external, right femoral, right popliteal, bifurcation, anterior tibial, posterior tibial, posterior tibial bifurcation in right peroneal and the lateral. This is the superficial and deep palmar artery arts are accompanied by superficial and deep venous arch. We are going to finish with the veins. We are going to go to the upper limb to talking about the veins. Veins are very important and are very easy because if there are artery, the artery have a vein. If you have the brachial artery, you have the brachial vein. If you have the femoral artery, you have the femoral vein because our deep arteries have deep veins. And it's very easy to remember the veins because you remember the artery. But be careful because we have superficial vein. Superficial vein have no artery. Cephalic, <coughs> basilic, great safena, and lesser safena. No arteries because our superficial veins. The deep vein accompany their respective arteries and are called their names. Brachial artery, brachial vein. Ulnar artery, ulnar vein. Something curious here. Sometimes the artery is only one, but sometimes the vein are two. Have one artery, but have two veins with the same name. This is very common. Two femoral veins is very common. Two femoral arteries, not. Two femoral veins. Ulnar vein mostly drain the medial aspect of the forearm, exactly like the artery. They arise the hand and terminate when they join the radial vein to form the brachial vein. Exactly the same that happened inferior is the same. The ulnar vein and the radial vein coming together and form the brachial vein. The brachial vein always is two, two brachial veins that go together. 
radial vein accompanying the radial artery through the back of the hand and the lateral aspect of the forearm. Radial artery, radial vein, together with the ulnar vein form the brachial vein. They join the ulnar vein to form the brachial vein. You can see here, two, one, two, two veins. This is very common, very common that not only one vein, two veins, two arteries not, only two veins. Brachial veins end at the inferior border of the teres bayer muscle, where the brachial vein joins the basilic vein to form the axillary vein. We don't talking about the axillary artery. In the same place where is the axillary artery, also is the axillary vein. You want to know what is the difference? Put pressure with the transducer, the vein close, the artery remain open. This is the easy form to know that something is a vein or is an artery. You can see here the basilic vein and the brachial vein together for the axillary vein. And when the cephalic vein coming together with the axillary vein become the subclavian vein. And the subclavian vein and the jugular vein, that is the vein of the carotid, coming together you have the venous brachiocephalic trunk. Venous brachiocephalic trunk are two. Right venous brachiocephalic trunk, left venous brachiocephalic trunk. The two venous brachiocephalic trunk coming together and form a very short vein that is called superior vena cava. It's short, inferior vena cava is big. Superior vena cava is very short. Both superior vena cava and inferior vena cava finish in the right artery. You can see here, this is the <coughs> brachio, venous brachiocephalic trunk. You internal jugular, this is the big one, internal jugular. This is that have the blood that coming from the brain. The cephalic vein is a superficial vein in the upper limb. The cephalic vein have artery? Not. Superficial vein have no artery. There are not nothing called cephalic artery. Do not exist. There are not cephalic artery, only cephalic vein. How I used to remember cephalic because I can touch my head. In other words, it's lateral. Cephalic, you can touch your head and moving. And basilic is the internal one. It communicates with the basilic vein via the median cubital vein. The medial cubital vein is here where they used to take the blood. Difference. A lot of people have different veins. Veins are not like arteries. Veins are very different in different patients. There are more common, less common. I suppose this is the more common, but it's different in different areas. This is cephalic. This is basilic. Very different. There are one scanning that is mapping. You know what is mapping? Mapping is to study all the vein. Why? Because mapping. they make they make um, dialysis. Dialysis. You know what is dialysis? The mm -hmm. people and they put a prothesis that is a fistula that put more easy to get the blood. Remember, dialysis is one day a week, and they need to have blood. And you study the veins of the artery and the cardiovascular surgeon put the fistula, it's called fistula, mm -hmm. to put the blood, to get the blood easy. But this is a problem because the person, one fistula, they need other, and at the final you cannot find a good artery and vein to make the fistula. It is located in the superficial fascia. You can see here, superficial, along the antero lateral surface of the bicep brachy muscle. This is the cephalic vein here, the axillary vein, we see the axillary vein. The axillary vein is a large blood vessel that conveys blood from the lateral aspect of the thorax, axilla, and upper limb toward the head. This is a big vein in the axilla. You see, if you have the artery, you have the vein too. Subclavian vein is a continuation of the axillary vein and room from the outer border of the fifth rib to the medial border of the anterior scalene muscle. Not important, not important. 
The only that you know is the subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein form the brachiocephalic vein that finish in the right atrium. It joins with the internal jugular vein to form brachiocephalic vein. Please do not confu confuse brachiocephalic vein con with innominate artery. This is brachiocephalic artery, only one. Brachiocephalic vein are two. You can see here, all the branch, you can see palmar arc, radial and ulnar coming together, brachial artery, brachial artery when coming the, the basilic become axillary artery, the axillary artery with the cephalic, the subclavian, subclavian and internal jugular, brachiocephalic throne, penobrachiocephalic throne that coming together to the right atrium. Make a picture of this, yeah, I know it's a lot, but if you practice, this is not very hard. It's like the palmetto, I-95, it's exactly the same. Okay, the popliteal vein could run alongside the popliteal artery. Its origin is defined by the union of the posterior tibial vein and the anterior tibial vein. It's logical, the same that you look downside, you get upside. It's not the popliteal that bifurcate in the anterior tibial and posterior tibial. Good, when the vein coming together for the popliteal. Veins are very easy. It's the same that doing the artery and the contrary. The femoral vein begins at the hunter canal. Logical that begins at the hunter canal because this is where the artery enters. And it's continuation of the popliteal vein. It ends at the inferior margin of the inguinal ligament. Inguinal ligament, attention, extern, iliac extern, and femoral artery, common femoral artery. And this is the common femoral vein, when go here, become external iliac vein. Same, if there are the arteries in the vein, you don't need to remember. If you know the right parietal, you don't need to study the left parietal. It's the same. If you know the artery, you have the vein. All deep arteries have a vein with the same name. Exception, the carotid. Because there are no carotid vein. It's called internal jugular. But this is the only exception. This is the superficial vein that human hate, if woman hates. The varicose veins. The varicose vein is produced by the superficial veins. Be careful with varicose vein. A lot of people like to inject and disappear. Sometimes have a function. If you close the superficial veins and the internal veins are not working good, the leg becomes very, very big and ugly. Ugly than the varicose veins. Must be careful, woman, with the problem of the varicose vein. You need to go a good professional because some people make a big, big mistakes and it's worse the remedy than the disease. Great saphenous vein is the superficial vein at the leg and the side. The great saphenous vein, that is the longest vein in the body. The longest vein in the body is the saphenous. What they use this? You know the bypass of the heart? Mm -hmm. Okay, they use this vein. This is the vein that they use to produce the bypass in the head. They was discovered by one Argentine, uh, one medicine, one medical doctor from Argentina, was the first person that invented the bypass. It's a very important in this moment. All the hospitals make bypass. You mapping the vein and the doctor in the mapping knows the artery is suitable to make the bypass. Very important. This is all protocol. You go very slowly measure the vein and put the areas and with a marker you mark the vein the doctor can open and close and put the vein away if you see people with bypass you can see the people have no safena in general sometimes you saw one the safena is not good if the vein is varicose it's not good need to be a vein in good condition great safenous vein or internal safenous vein Before entering and opening in the fascia lata cale the saphenous opening. They enter the saphenous and of course finish in the femoral vein. 
is here in this area. It joins with the femoral vein in the region of the femoral triangle, and this is a phenofemoral junction. Okay? Femoral artery, femoral vein, and this is a fena vein that finish <coughs> in the <coughs> commune femoral vein. And I don't know what it is. Okay, this is the artery, the vein, and the safena entering the vein. Looking like a Mickey Mouse. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the small saphenous vein, also less than saphenous vein, is a relative large vein of the superficial posterior leg. But look at that, the lesser finish here in the popliteal area. The big one finish in the femoral area. The little one finish here in the popliteal area. Drain into the popliteal vein approximately are all about the level of the knee joint. Some protocol they use to scanning, other protocol don't care too much about this. Ah, uh, here you have the artery. I don't know how they put the artery. Hello? I'm looking for the master key. Do you have it? No, I have no okay. master key. Okay, this is all a picture about the greater saphenous vein and the lesser saphenous vein you cannot see here. This is all a picture you can study. You know I'm going exactly put the PowerPoint in the cloud and you can see you can study with this. And of course, I am going to put this class exactly in YouTube or maybe that take one week. All a picture. And this is the vein exactly like the arteries. You can see here to study superior mesenteric vein. And this is the final part. I'm very important because we are going to talking about the portal vein. And I need you to know what is the portal vein. The portal vein is very important to understand. It's a vein, but don't work in like a vein. What, what do vein? Take the blood away to the organ. Portal vein not. Portal vein put blood into the liver. The superior mesenteric vein drain blood from the small intestine. Exactly the same that doing the artery, the same, the contrary that make the vein. The superior mesenteric vein at its termination behind the neck of the pancreas, the confluence, the superior mesenteric vein combined with the splenic vein to form the portal vein. Please, the portal vein is very important is the vessel that give blood to the liver. And this is very rare because vein take blood, don't put blood. Liver is the exception. Liver take blood from the portal vein. You can see here, portal vein, superior mesenteric vein, splenic vein, and this is the inferior mesenteric vein, the important. All the blood that coming from the digestive system need to pass to the liver to be cleaned before re-entering in the normal circulation. This is very important, everybody must know. Portal vein is very important. Give blood to the liver. And what is the beginning of the portal vein? Confluence. Where is the confluence? Inferior, no, posterior to the pancreas. Confluence is posterior to the pancreas. A splenic vein, a vein formed by the union of the several small veins that return blood from the stomach, pancreas, inferior mesenteric vein, and a spleen. You can see here, everybody need to know this picture. This is not new. Pancreas, superior mesenteric artery, aorta, IVC. You know what is this? The left renal vein the only vein that cools anterior to the aorta. IVC, left renal vein, aorta, what is this? The vertebral column, and this is the confluence, and the confluence is the beginning of the portal vein. Head of the pancreas, neck, body, and the tail. And what is this? I don't know. <laughs> okay, a picture of the splenic vein. Inferior mesenteric vein is a blood vessel that drains blood from the large intestine. Remember, descending column. This is the inferior mesenteric vein. Portal vein, the portal vein carries blood from the digestive tract to the liver and is formed by the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein. Please, this is called 
Confluence and is a very important landmark. Portal Bay is important. Confluence also is important. If you go to one world and you don't know what is the confluence, you are not going to get the job. This is the special landmarks. Confluence. And you can see here, this is the hepatic vein color Doppler. This is not the portal, this is the hepatic vein. Okay, you have a key, a spectral Doppler of the portal vein. Look at this is curious in the portal vein. It's a vein and the walls are echogenic. This is all the difference of the portal vein. Give blood and also have characteristic of arteries. Remember, arteries have echogenic walls, but veins not. And this is for that portal vein is the contrary of other veins. Also, is transverse. In sagittal is round, in transverse is long. You can hear different pictures of the same. Portal vein, confluence, splenic vein, inferior mesenteric vein, and superior mesenteric vein. Okay, other picture of the same. Looking here, the gallbladder. But this is the portal vein here. You can see here the pancreas. This is the confluence behind the pancreas. Confluence is here, and this is the confluence here. Please, confluence is very important landmark. All the picture of the same. Hepatic veins, Pamela, posterior, anterior, medial, and lateral. And the hepatic vein, right hepatic vein, middle hepatic vein, and left hepatic vein. Any of the veins that carry from the liver the blood collected from the hepatic artery and portal vein and determinate in the IVC. This is true. Hepatic vein finish in the IVC. Easy to scan. What is the name? La puñalada del cochino. And you put the knife here or the transducer and you can look in the hepatic vein. Remember, it's little diagonal. It's transverse, but it's looking the right shoulder. You put the transducer transverse, you're moving a little and you can find the, hep the hepatic veins. Picture, what is this hyperechoic structure that is here? Diaphragm. Diaphragm. And what is the name of all this stuff here? Liver parenchyma. This is the structure of the liver. And you can see here, you know what it is? This is an artifact. This is not real. The diaphragm produces a mirror image of the thing that are in here. This is not real. This is an artifact because the diaphragm produces a mirror artifact. Renal veins are the veins that drain the kidney. They connect the kidney to the IVC. There are no problem because kidney are not organ of the digestive system. Go finish directly. What is the renal vein that is anterior to the aorta? The left renal vein the only vein that curves anterior to the aorta. And the right renal artery, the only artery that curves posterior to the IVC. Are the veins that drain the kidney, they connect the kidney to the IVC. Ya lo tienen aquí. And you have here this picture. 